Welcome to the Lemon Tube Amiga Workbench Guides. This video was made possible by our sponsors on Patreon. If you'd like to support these videos, why not check out our Lemon Tube Amiga Club subscription page, where you'll find all the latest perks and freebies. In the system drawer, we'll find Amiga Shell. And an Amiga Shell, you might also see CLI knocking around as well, but the Shell is the one that we're going to go for. This is also known as Amiga DOS. So you might recognize this as a command line interface. That means we can type things in and manipulate, well, basically a workbench behind the scenes. So this gives us a nice big window. You can resize that nice and large. And you can see new shell process three. That means we've already run two processes before this. And CD is current directory. So CD, we're currently in workbench. And with the colon at the end of it, that means it's a drive. If we type info, that will give us a list of all the drives. So DHO, DH1 with a colon after it means that it's a drive. You can see all of the information. We can read write to all of those. The workbench drive is known as DH1. And we've also got our RAM disk. There's no disk present in DFO, the floppy disk drives. And the DHO, the hard disk drives, you can see the PC drives are in there as well. And my files DHO, in this case, are in the files directory. We can also see the volume labels as well. The RAM disk, those are what the things are known as, the drive labels. We can also type those in to access those. And if we've got files, that will put us to files and workbench, of course, will take us back to the workbench drive. We can also type in the local names, DHO or DH1, and you can see that the path of wherever we are is listed in the shell as our current location. We're now at workbench, and so that tells us where we are, and that means that we know where we are. So if we type CD DHO, that will change the current drive, the current directory to DHO. And if we type DIR, that will give us a directory of wherever we are. We're in the files directory at the moment, and the files drive is completely empty. Oh, there's a disk info in there, and that's the disk info you can see there. That's the icon for the disk. So that's the only thing it's got on it. And if we go to DH1, it's workbench. We can do a directory around that. We can see all the hidden folders and everything else through CLI or shell. We can see C directory is hidden. We can also see that that C directory is actually where we store all the commands. The S directory is for the startup sequence. We can also see the ones that we've seen already, the devs, the system, the L tells us the file systems that we're going to be using, other tools that we've seen already in the storage. T is a temp drive, WE startup, and that's for AREX, that's an AREX directory. The expansion drawer, if we've got any expansions, classes, if we've got any upgrades, the locale directory, the prefs that we've seen, the libraries we'll be coming back to, and those fonts that we haven't really installed. So, those are all the directories that you can see. Those are everything that Workbench needs to run. And you can get rid of many of these and it will still run. And you only need some of these if you're running the command line interface. Definitely the C directory is used on the startup sequence and then it's used for the commands. So DIR is actually a command in the C directory. And by typing DIR question mark, it will give us all of the preferences that we can have. We can DIR all if we want to see, I think, subdirectories as well. And we can see inter, which means we can step through all of those directories one at a time. By pushing up and down on the cursor keys, we can also go up and down on every single thing that we've typed into shell so far. So we don't have to type any command in again twice. We can also edit any command or anything that we've entered. So that comes in really handy. So DIR, if we do, well, I'm not quite sure what some of these do. They're all in the manual that came with Workbench. And so if you have the Workbench manual, you can find all those. And in the C drawer, you can find a full list of commands that we've got available. And the S, again, that's for the startup sequence. 
T doesn't have anything in it, it's just a temporary blank directory, so you can definitely delete that if you really want to, but maybe things use that as a temporary directory when they're installing things, so that's why the T directory is in there, and so just doing a DIO, you can see it's listed them seemingly in the order that we last looked at them, so we last looked at T, so it's listed that first, so it's a weird directory listing, because it kind of remembers things and it's intuitive so that's why it's called intuition so that's why it's kind of preemptive multitasking operating system so the inter again means we can step through every directory we can list the contents of that directory one at a time i can't remember the key to press to actually list the directory or the combination so i'm just pressing anything wildly at the moment stepping through every single one but you can do that from one command if you really want to do that and it's like a directory tree where we can tree out everything and you can certainly do directory tree type functions using the commands that we've got in the c directory so what else are we going to do now that we've accessed the workbench behind the scenes we can do anything with it and so let's check it out again and let's see what i end up doing in this footage and dirs is another switch that will simply list out all of the drawers I've no idea why it's doing that but you can see there is a dir next to that which means it's a drawer surely if it was a drawer it would be drw or something but that's basically a directory so that's what they call directories in this Amiga DOS you might know them as under different names so let's check out the fonts there's nothing in there at the moment and check it out L it's got a few file systems in there and CD dot dot well that's a PC DOS and so to get back to the previous uh, directory you have to do CD uh, backslash I think it is or forward slash whichever way you want to call that and that basically takes us back to our previous directory or we can simply CD where we want to go by tapping workbench or tapping DHO so we can see that all of these directories are listed and all the info files at the bottom are listed as well if we want to see all of those stats we can also type list and that will list everything out on the screen with all those stats the creation date and also the protection bits as well you can see some of these aren't editable according to that they haven't got an E there or W blank D so that comes in handy it looks like the icons can't be edited for some reason but they can be written to so I'm not quite sure why that's there and you can see list question mark we can have various switches on the edge of that various tags or suffixes or prefixes or whatever you want to call those they're basically extra operations that we can apply to the list command and so we can list things in alphabetical order and in certain orders and so we can see using the info command as well we can list the drives in a in the same manner that we've seen before information will then list all the physical directories the mounted disks that we've got connected to the Amiga and so if we type list uh, info DH1 it will simply put the information of drive DH1 on that screen so we can check out all of the drawers we can check out all of the drives and we can CD into any directory from here and do a DIR and check it out so in here we've got the cross DOS file system that you need if you're running the commodity to run the PC activation thing so you definitely need that cross DOS file system if you're going to use that and the port handler is something to do with um, serial and parallel connections I think it's also got the CD file system in there in the libs directory we've got all the libraries that we need the maths directory the maths libraries they contain quick maths lookup tables for programs that need those AREX support is in there data types library is for well basically the data types and the data types are codecs for loading up the 
um, pictures, all the different pictures, the GIFs, the PNGs, and all that kind of thing. Uh, the JPEGs. So you can see the DOS drivers are in there, the DOS drivers drawer, and that will run those DOS drivers. Those are extra things that we can connect, like the PC drives. And so DOS drivers is separately separate to the data types, and you'll have to get used to all this lingo. So we can see the S directory here, and the S, of course, with the uh, Amiga Workbench controls the startup sequence, which definitely deserves a video on its own, so we'll be doing that.